Well, hello everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to start a really well-rounded game in Farthest Frontier and everything you need to know to do the basic setups of a village. Now, if this is your first time seeing my video, I have over 300 hours on this game and I have hundreds of videos on Farthest Frontier and many, many builds. And I have quite an extensive knowledge of this game. Now, starting left to right is your difficulty. Easy medium hard now this has an impact on your starting conditions of course the amount of resources that you start with the type of wildlife that you can hunt how many times you're raided and the variance in difficulty of diseases that will hit your, your village with the hardest difficulty having plagues and stuff that can wipe out 25 percent of your your population now starting resources are important on vanquisher you start with four months worth of food and barely any tools so if that doesn't sound your speed you're going to want to start on pioneer or tra trailblazer just based on that criteria alone now basically the way that animal spawns work is the lower tier difficulty has mostly deer and the higher tier difficulty has less deer and more bears and more wool and on the hardest difficulty bears are a big problem bears are always attacking your villagers outside of your walls and it's it's quite a debacle the third thing that it will impact is the severity and difficulty of sieges later game going from trailblazer to vanquisher there is a massive increase in difficulty of raids and vanquisher mode at the later stage of the game you're raided every other year year well like on my 1000 pop build i'm getting raided by 200 odd people on lower tier builds you're going to be getting hit by about 100 raiders every other year and that has a severe impact on gameplay because all of your production is getting halted when you're attacked and that adds another layer to the game so while you may think that your food is adequate it may not be if you get raided and no one's farming and as i expressed with the health issues they increase in severity and scope so if this is your first time playing i'd honestly play on pioneer if you're not new to this genre and you want to challenge go trail Road, do you know it? If you play Vanquisher mode, you really should have a knowledge of how this game works, or you probably are gonna you probably are gonna die. For performance, I recommend you play on small and medium-sized maps. Medium maps is actually the Goldilocks area. You don't really need a map bigger. The large map just has huge performance issues right now, in my opinion. Now we're gonna go over map types. Every map has different resources and different environmental fertility factors. Now, environmental fertility factor is the rate at which fertility gains on farmland. Now, depending upon the map you choose, some of it will have better farmland and some of it won't. For instance, whereas Lowland Lakes has like 80 to 90. So the way that works is fertility impacts yields. I mean, obviously, right? But the gain or loss on fertility is different, for instance, for arid highlands, it has an environmental fertility factor of about 45%. Now you have losses in fertility for certain plants and those are always 100%, but your gains are capped environmental fertility factor. So your gains are substantially less in the arid highlands and your losses are the same. So you have to find this like balance and equilibrium of what to grow, which crops are gonna get compost on them. Like for instance, if you're growing lots of wheat, which has a massive impact on farmland, you're gonna wanna make sure that that's the farm you're prioritizing compost deposits for because the fertility values Will be decreasing dramatically with your yield. Farming can get a bit complicated and I'm not going to go over that in this video because that's more of a later stage thing. I would recommend you check out some of my let's plays that show early game development. Arid Highlands has pretty much everything but clay. Plains doesn't have a lot, but it has really good farmland. Idyllic Valley has pretty much every resource. Lowland Lakes has a ton of clay, like some small bits of iron here and there. Arid Islands has gold deposits, which you can smelt for gold. Alpine Valley has pretty much everything. Now it's important to note that each of the difficulties is indicated by green and red arrows, with two green arrows being the easiest and two red arrows being the hardest. Now, to be honest, it's kind of not true because for me personally the arid highlands is actually easier in some respects than the other maps because it has high concentrations of gold which i can smelt to generate money to build up my village random's cool because it randomizes all the feature i've, I've played a few games on random so take all of these arrows with a grain of salt really because each has a play style which has massive benefits or detriments starting off i would recommend that you play in idyllic valley and lowland lakes as they have an abundance of hunting ground and the base materials for things that you're going to need now Typically, I play on Vanquisher difficulty Arid Highlands, but for this video, I want to show you how the game works. If you're new, I'm going to do Trailblazer, Lowland Lakes, and I'm going to do a, a small map size because it's just going to load easier. Now, when you start your map, it's going to look a lot like this. You're going to want to look at a host of factors. Every map has certain resources that spawn that you're going to want to look into capitalizing on. The way that efficiency works in this game is it's based on the distance from where a person is housed to their work site to storage. So there's a 
lot to consider. You can't just look at the short-term needs of your village. You want to look at the long-term tier one, tier two, tier three. Now, you're not really going to know that if you're just starting the game. These things can help you have successful playthrough. For the Lowland Lakes, you're going to want access to clay. You're going to want access to willow for basket making. And you're going to want access to herbs for both the upgrading tier one to tier two housing, soap making, and medicine. Herbs are amazing and critical. You can also actually trade them. So it's an early game trade item too. We have, Right here we have fish. Boar farms are a more advanced feature that if you watch one of my Let's Plays like on the Legion Shield episode 2, that will show you how to set up a proper boar farm. So right here we have everything we need. Um, we have a bunch of wolf dens. I would actually like to build a base right here because I want the height. You get up to a plus 18 damage height modifier. So height modifier is incredibly crucial for defenses. Uh, you can increase the productivity. We actually have iron in this map right over there. So you just want to serve... Oh wow. So this mountain right here actually even has gold, has a ton of iron, has every resource you need in the game. I want to build as close to this mountain as possible. It's possible that there could be more lakes around this area. So right here is a pretty good location. You see we have the mountain there. We want to kind of stay away from the wolves over there. I think that we're close enough to the mountain right here. We have a slight height advantage. We have herbs right next to us. We have a deer farm right over here. We have willow and herbs right here. And we have access to all the resources. Potentially right here would be a good here would be a really good starting location. Easy access to everything. The deer, mul multiple deer spawns, clay right there. And this is a very basic introduction guide. I could actually make this a lot more complicated, but this is meant for first time players. We're just people who are struggling with the game and are trying to learn game mechanics. All right. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your build town center is prioritized. And the reason I say that is prioritized. That way you always have them working on building it. So I prioritize the build center immediately. Then you want to go down here to harvest resources and just tell them to start harvesting a little bit of wood so that they're continually working. You then want to look for any kind of stone you can and harvest that, but not too much. Um, these two right here, you only want to harvest like about 40 stone. So don't have them harvesting a ton of stone, just like a few stone. Mainly your big thing early game is going to be wood. So focus on that. All right, I'm going to speed this up. But All right, so speed it up. So they're going to clear the area and they're going to build the town center. Now, I would recommend you have them just focusing on building the town center and clearing the land and not having anything else being built because they'll start clearing that land instead of fo two, instead of focusing on this initial setup. This Clearing this land and everything should get you the initial wood that you need to build your base to. Now we have a lot, a lot of wood in this area, so it's gonna take us longer to get certain things up. All right, now once your town center is up, hit pause, and we're gonna go down the chain. Primarily three things you wanna focus on. The first one is getting food production ASAP. If you're playing on the hardest difficulty, I'm playing on medium, you only have four months of food. We have nine. You still want to get this going. And I recommend substantially, no matter what difficulty you're playing on or what your resources look like, etc., that you get two hunter cabins up. And the reason I say two hunter cabins is because these two hunter cabins will provide enough meat for up to 50 people with a smokehouse, which is the third building you need to build in this chain. And that's why I told you to start harvesting stone because you need stone to build it. And you want to get that up ASAP because meat expires in six months, but when you smoke it, it lasts like over a year and a half. So these are the primary two buildings you want to get up. And in between them, the next thing you want to get up is a firewood splitter. Now you need the firewood splitter to smoke the meat and also to prepare you for the winter, you need firewood. Now you want to get the food and firewood production going first because you need time for them to start gathering resources. Housing can be completed right before winter. And that will be the next thing that you want to set up and you want to build four houses and you want to make sure that they're far enough away from your industrial building from uh, the firewood splitter so that they don't get a desirability loss. But yeah, we want to get up six houses to take advantage of that immigration wave. So prior, make sure that the hunter cabins are prioritized. You want everybody prioritizing those buildings. And they have a lot of land to clear, so we're going to let them clear it. So the hunter's cabin, we're going to get um, over here. All right, we got our woodcutter up. We got one of our first houses up. All right, second hunter up. Make sure to go to the hunter, click 
retarget building work area. This will designate the area that they go and hunt in. And I'm going to just pick this general area because I have two spawns. It's really good. Had I had spawns in separate locations, I'd have a hunter for each. We can also build fishing down here later. All right, now that we're moving in the right direction, we want to also make sure that we get the well up as soon as possible. You can really place that anywhere because all buildings can be moved simply by selecting the building, clicking relocate building location. That allows you to move it anywhere. The only thing that can't be moved is the town center, but the town center actually can be destroyed by hitting clear and then highlighting it and then selecting to destroy it and then going into building menu, amenities and services, and then selecting the town center. So you can at this time move the town center, though they are talking about removing the ability to do that. So keep that into consideration. Early game, you wanna keep everything centered around your town center for protection and to keep everything kind of solidified in one area. It just helps to keep your people protected from both predators and raids. Now raiders are going to target your storage units so your early game storage you want to make sure that you are placing that next to your your town center all right now that we have the um smokehouse up and you want to keep your smokehouse near the firewood splitter and i'm actually and your storage for firewood you get more productivity of having it closer to that than the hunter's cabin the food situation has secured itself we need to select more wood to cut as you can see we need a bit more stone so we're going to harvest stone and just kind of grab we have one stone over here that they're working on go ahead and click prioritize so that they get you that one stone that you need the second thing that we want to do is get a gatherer's hut up we don't want to overwhelm our um people though we let's wait for some more immigration to come in and then we'll get a gatherer's hut up because we don't necessarily okay so seven people want to come boom now we're at 18 so now we're gonna get the uh, forager shack up and I'm gonna have them start bringing in herbs in preparation of our housing upgrading to tier two. All right, they wanna mark it. All right, so the next step is we need to get our um, storage up, start moving towards tier two. So get a stockyard. Again, keep your stockyard near your, pro your production to increase efficiency and near your town center to increase protection. Once the stockyard's up, we'll get the storehouse up, and then we'll get a sawmill up. Now the hunters are bringing in both meat, pelts, and tallow. Now this is great because with tallow and herbs, we can make soap, and with the pelts, we can make shoes and jackets. I would recommend you get a cobbler up as soon as you possibly can. So now that we have storage up, we can get the saw pit up. And you can see that the saw pit has a really large desirability negative you want to make sure you're placing it far enough away from your cities that from your people that you're not getting a desirability impact so i'm going to place it right here and i want it here because it's right next to the stockyard and then for storage you want to build out your storehouse and you want to build out your root cellar as that's going to add and i'm going to place the root cellar near my my people and that's going to add a lot more shelf life to the meat and that's really good we're going to need more stone so i'm going to select another stone a couple stone in fact that's about 50. I try not to gather too much stone in the beginning. Um, for our forager shack, we want to make sure it's concentrated on this area and bringing in herbs and berries and whatever it can gather. And those herbs are going to be necessary for tier two. Now to go to tier two, we need 30 stone and we need 50 wood planks and a population of 30 and a market and eight shelters, which you would need to have 30 people anyway. So with that, we're going to start working on getting last shelters up. We're gonna need the planks to build a market and the market's gonna start bringing in gold, which will allow us to do defenses and all types of stuff. Again, keep your storehouses right next to your town center. When the bandits come, you click on the bell and you'll have people garrison, but the raiders will come and they will try to take items out of your storehouses. Now, another that's another reason I do the hunters, as I said, because they double as defensive units. Two hunters can take out five to six bandits, no problem. This is your military early game, basically. All right, and our immigration's really good. We're doing a really good job of bringing immigrants in right now. We're gonna need more stone. Stone is a lot harder to find in the Lowland Lakes map, so you wanna be constantly either buying it once you hit the trade age or harvesting it. Okay, so we have stone down here. We're gonna harvest all that stone because we need a bunch of it. Now, keep in mind, this layout isn't a permanent layout. This is an early game strategy layout. I have many Let's Plays built. I have many Let's Plays showing 
a ton of advanced builds. I encourage you to check those out if you find this useful and if you want to know more. But this is how I would start any early game. All right, now that we have the sawmill up, I'm actually going to bump this up to three people because I want to get more, more wood planks as soon as possible. I also want to get a Fletcher building up as soon as possible so that I don't run out of arrows. I started with quite a few on this map, so we're probably okay for some time. Our entire um, food system is based on hunting and arrows, so if we ran out of arrows, it would be very detrimental to the society. So I'm actually going to move this forager shack down here because I rather have these herbs, medicinal roots, and willow. This is actually kind of like a Goldilocks of everything you need. And with that willow, I can get basket shop up. You want to get a basket shop up as soon as you possibly can. Place it near your storage because the baskets increase the carrying capacity of your citizens and dramatically increase their productivity. So I'm going to get that up right now. I'm going to prioritize the move, moving of this building because I want to get that willow. I want to get this operational ASAP. All right, right now we're building up the 30 people and we're trying to make sure that we have the resources necessary to hit tier two. Um, we need to get the market up next. Amenities and services, market. Now you can see that the area of the market will impact not only desirability gain of the huts, but it will bring in gold too per hut. We need to terraform this area for it to be flat. Now a really easy terraforming is not to do this, but to do, to do strips because it terraforms the inner area for free. So this will substantially reduce the amount of, uh, of labor necessary and really speeds up the terraforming process. All right, now that the area is flat, I can place my first market. Now, typically I would wall in my town center, but again, that's, tip that's usually the next step. This is early game. If you want to see what much more advanced setups, you, you really do need to watch a let's play because there's multiple steps and it's over the course of hours. Eventually what I will have is a, a town center a trade post and a storage unit all in an enclosed area with two towers protecting it you want to make sure that your your trade posts and your storage area are walled off it's a lot easier to wall off a small area like that of vital buildings than it is to wall off an entire town in the beginning of the game the legion's shield is probably the best example i have of how to do a really good early game build so as you see we almost have two years worth of food we have our market square up bringing in money and we have our town center now, what I would recommend you do is once you get money is you build your first tower around the vicinity of your market square because they will come and try the raiders will try to destroy it. Don't place it bordering it because you don't want the enemy clustering around here with the potential to hit it. You want to place it off kind of on its own, like right here. Uh, that way the enemies gravitate towards it and aren't running around and hitting the market area. Uh, enemies will attack anything that is attacking them as a priority. I'd also recommend, once we hit tier, I'd also recommend doing one little palisade wall and uh, gate around it. Make sure you have enough stone. We have enough stone get being gathered. Check out our villagers. Always make sure everyone's all up to speed, fully staffed. I'm going to highlight some more trees for them to cut down. Make sure your forester is getting everything this one is. So as you can see, we have baskets being made. We made two baskets last year. Not great, but he's making baskets now. We have plenty of firewood. And you can set production limits on firewood. For instance, I am constantly reevaluating my needs. I would say you want about 500 at least. And so I can put this up to two people. And then when it reaches that quota, they'll be immediately released back into labor. So you don't have to worry about wasted resources. Okay, we're able to go to tier two now. We're gonna upgrade to tier two. I'm gonna prioritize it because I wanna get that up fast. Now that we hit tier two, we can build walls. Let's get a wall around this tower so that it doesn't get destroyed. Put a gate on it and we're good. Now wood is basically the lifeblood of any build. I'm going to quasi organize my village now that I have a defensive building so I don't have to have everything hugging the main town center now. I'm gonna get a road in here. I'm gonna move um, the hunters closer to their work site and I'm gonna start organizing everything in a way that I would I would do this. Move the well up, move everything out of the way. Um, start getting defenses up around your buildings. A 
leave a one tile gap on the outside area. This is just like a really basic design I'm doing. But leave a one tile gap on the outside area of your centralized storage unit. Like so. All right, and get the trade center up and place it inside this area. I would have a road facing the trade center. Like so. Trade center gets up, has a road. You can have walls on the outside. There's no problem with that. So we're going to wall the outside area like this. Have a gate section connecting the wall pieces and defensive tower right here. Yeah, right here. Your town center will protect this side of your fortified area and this will protect the town center. Now you have a fortified area where your town center is. Your storage is fortified and nobody can steal anything from you. Once this is completed, have a gate into your storage area so that your men have easy access to the materials. And we have just enough gold for two towers right now. So we got our first tower up. It's defending this area. I'm actually gonna build more and then, you know, build houses as you adjust your food and everything. And you can build them, make sure they're in this sphere so they get taxed and you can build it around this tower. And just move everything um, into range of your industrial area and there you go. Just make sure that you're continually cutting wood. Now as a next step, what I would really recommend you do is get your first work camp and wagon shop up. So you're going to want to go to storage, wagon shop, and this can really go anywhere. We'll do the wagon shop there. And then once that's up, we can get a work camp and it can specialize in cutting down wood. Now, what makes this useful is when you look at your laborer, he's going out, cutting a tree down and hauling it all the way back to storage. While the work camp, the unit just hauls it back to the work camp storage area. And then a wagon comes and gets it. This substantially increases the productivity rate of one person cutting down wood. And as you can see, I'm out of wood. But if I have a work camp, I'm going to have a lot more resources coming in for way less labor cost. Now, keep in mind, my housing area is not organized. I'll organize this as I see as i see fit and as i have more resources to expand let's prioritize the trading post and let's highlight more wood to be cut down all right and when you move things make sure that you reset the areas they're hunting also be sure to check out how the uh, deer move around it's really important to diversify i recommend you do an eight by nine cropland uh, as it uses three workers and has one of them is one of the most efficient setups that you can use early early game or a six by twelve i recommend you get a, a farm plot up as soon as you possibly can though to offset the probability that at some point your hunting won't be consistent as the deer do move around and stuff happens and that's usually how a lot of people die so get up a farmland once you hit over 30 people and you're at this stage of the game you can build it anywhere on the lowland lake map because it's so fertile in uh, arid highlands and other maps, you want to be very, very perfectionist where you place things like they have to factor into the future of your build because you don't want to move that stuff because it takes so long to build up fertility on the soil. But here you can just do whatever you want. All right. There we go. As you can see, the 8x9 fits perfectly between these two roads. Now, if I wanted a more constant food source i could create gatherers to gather the mushrooms and things around this area especially over here with hazelnuts and walnut bushes only reason i'm hesitating to do so is because there's wolves over there i need to build a cobbler but i do have a bunch of pelts and i'm going to sell all of these pelts this gold right here will be really useful to me in setting up my basic defenses all right now i can sell the pelts 324 gold and i can hit transfer and move that half that gold into my city. Now I have enough gold to uh, finish off my designs. I am gonna add a few more houses as I need to get this to, okay, we're at positive six now. So I can get um, my tower up, All right? The wagon shop is up, so that's huge. This is the, the critical stage of the game. There's multiple things we wanna do. We wanna start bringing in clay. 
We're gonna build a clay pit down there and we're gonna do a wood camp and we're gonna do it right. And I'm gonna build a road to that work camp so that the ox cart has a cleaner path. And the same down here with the clay. All right, tower is up. And I encourage you to min and max certain buildings as you see fit. Like right now, I don't really need as many boards. I need wood, I need more laborers, I need more builders. So I'm gonna decrease certain industries like that. My meat's still doing really well. Fine, you're having issues with food. I do encourage you to create gathers. I do encourage you to do fishing as fishing is very consistent. The only problem here is that the fish count is 223 so you really one fisher can do about 250 fish so oh you can overfish in areas so you only need one fisher shack like look at the max fish over here it's 306 so even though this is a big lake about two fishers is all you're gonna want for that area uh maybe even one it's not a lot of fish it's really the it's deceiving to think that you could have more because it's bigger it's just a little bit more all right and so we have a max population of 56 this is a really good place to hold and build up up your infrastructure as the more people you have the larger the raiding parties will be etc now in order for your housing to upgrade there's tier four tiers and you have to have certain requirements the main one being your town center has to be upgraded to that tier now early game what you need are two food types herbs and a 30 uh, desirability so you have five food types pro it's kind of weird it doesn't make a lot of sense so you gotta keep this in mind protein grain vegetables fruit and dairy now the easy ones to get for us are fruit vegetables and protein we have a ton of protein that's why i'm growing out this farm is so we can get greens and get these upgraded now we have herbs which is what you need to upgrade to tier two already. And we need desirability of 30. Now the easiest building and one of the best buildings is the festival pole. It's really cheap. It's just 10 wood, 10 stone and 150 gold. And that's really not a lot. It has a huge radius and it increases desirability. And it also gives the added benefit of entertainment. So if you look at your villager happiness, you have all these happiness values, clothing, shoes, desirability of the place. Do they have shelter, how their health is, etc. Entertainment comes into factor at a later stage, but this impacts the efficiency of combat and your work rates. So it's really important to keep those in check. Tier two is a whole nother layer of strategy, but this is how I would set it up. There you go. You got your clay, you got your hunters. So we're, we're running out of ammunition right now. So you want to make sure when you can that you build a Fletcher. And I could have done this much sooner. So the work camp's up. So you can tell them to do stone or just wood. In this situation, I just want them doing wood. And I'm going to increase this to three people. Then we have the Fletcher. I really recommend that you put production caps on your Fletcher immediately. And I would just do something like 50 and 50 and 400 for arrows. And something like minimum of 20 and a maximum of 40 for bows. So they'll get arrows producing. We still have a year's worth of food. We have a slow amount of clay coming in. Clay is super important because it's needed for certain buildings. A lot of the buildings being the schools and all types of stuff. Again, really recommend you watch a more in-depth Let's Play. It's, it's incredibly hard to go into all the mechanics of the game. But here you go. This is just a really quick guide on how to do all this stuff and which, what you should be looking at.